today we are off on another adventure to try and make the rig on Atticus bulletproof for our Pacific Crossing. Catching these weak points in our rig actually makes me really happy. For our Pacific Crossing, our rig is going to be that much stronger. <laughs> Who's your daddy? Previously on Project Atticus. After spending three years refitting our fixer-upper sailboat, we left the United States with only $2,000 and the goal of working while we cruised. We made it as far as Isla Mujeres, Mexico before we ran out of money and had to find work. For the next year, we did freelance boat repair jobs until we saved up enough cash to cast the lines and sail south to explore the Western Caribbean. For the past couple months, we've been working hard on boat projects in Bocas del Toro, Panama, to prepare Atticus for her biggest challenge yet, crossing the Pacific Ocean. All right, good morning. Well, today we are starting another fun project in pursuit of trying to make the rig on Atticus bulletproof for our Pacific crossing. This project is going to be involving the chain plates. A couple of our chain plates have been leaking. With this one in particular, and with a couple of them, you can actually see some rust stains developing. These chain plates are only four or five years old. Most likely, the chain plates are just fine. There's probably very little corrosion, and it's probably not an actual problem. But we're taking the advice from Andy Shell from 59 Degrees North. Uh, we chatted with him at the Annapolis Boat Show and asked him what advice he had for our Pacific Crossing. If there's anything at all you think the boat needs done, do, do it. it. Yeah. Anything at all that you're just in the back of your head, ah, oh, maybe we'll save that project for later, just do it now. Because <laughs> you're going to lose sleep over it halfway across the Pacific and you're yeah. going to be like, damn, I should have done that. Yeah. Because of that, we are going to remove the chain plates and inspect them to see if we have any corrosion problems. Well, I took the chain plate out and it looks really, really good to me. It's, it's got a little bit of rust stain on it, but there's almost no like heavy corrosion. Looking at the little aperture here for the chain plate where it goes through the deck, the last time that we sealed the chain plate, we used Cicaflex. The problem here is that when I originally cut this hole for the chain plate, I did a really bad job. And so it's really imperfect. There is way more of a gap on one side than the other. So I actually really like how the Sika Flex has made this perfect slot that the chain plate fits into snugly. And so what I'm thinking is you can see there's this lip here that the Sika Flex made, and that's the opposite of the bottom of this plate. And what I'm gonna do is cut this lip off all around the aperture at something like a 45 degree angle. And then you'll have a little bit of a recess there. And then you'll have a little bit of space here. And I'll be able to put the chain plate in, put butyl around the area, and then just squeeze it all down. And ideally what that'll do is it'll create a gasket or almost like an O-ring right around the chain plate. Of all the tools that we've got on Atticus, this cordless Dremel is becoming my favorite. It's just so versatile. I think if I had had this years ago when I was cutting these holes, these holes would be a lot more accurate and we might not be having this problem now. The next thing I want to do is clean up the chain plate. Uh, so I walked over here to the marina's little workshop area. I'm gonna polish it up real quick. Okay, so I polished up the chain plate and it looks great. No real damage from corrosion or anything like that. If this was older, I would probably want to do some kind of a dye test or take a look at it with a uh, magnifying lens or something. But the fact that this is only a couple years old, I'm not worried about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this back into the through deck aperture, bolt it on, see if we can't seal it. Well, 
looks good. So that's one down and only seven more to go. All right, well, it took me a while, but I was able to finish all of the chain plates. And so now I'm moving on to installing our cheeky tang for our new solent stay, removable solent stay that we're gonna be installing. Um, so the solent stay is going to be made out of Dyneema ducts, so all synthetic. Um, and the way that it's gonna to attach to the mast itself, it's gonna be this cheeky tang from Caligo Marine. There's gonna be a Dyneema loop that goes around either one of these little cheeky tangs on both sides of the mast, and then that's going to terminate at a connection point where the solen stay will be able to connect to that loop. Now I want to install the through bolt for the cheeky tangs as, as high up on the mast as I can because there aren't going to be any running back stays uh, and that's what makes it a solen stay. And so to make that work, it has to be installed as high up on the mast as possible so that it's close enough to the fore and back stay so that it's actually getting most of its support from those stays. Okay, got the cheeky tang installed. The really nice thing about the removable solen stay being synthetic is that it'll be really easy to stow. It won't bang against anything. You know, you can stow it right up against the mast as if it were a halyard or something. And not to mention that this whole system is a lot less prone to corrosion. The bolt, the nut, that's all titanium. So I'm really excited about this. It's gonna be cool. So the next project I'm gonna start is I'm gonna take care of the corrosion that's occurring on the portion of the mizzen head where the triadic stay connects. And so basically the triadic stay is what connects the head of the mizzen mast to the head of the main mast. And if you look here, there's a lot of corrosion going on around the clevis pin that holds that triadic stay to the head of the mizzen. My plan is to just cut off the portion of the head that is corroded and then drill a new hole for the clevis pen. Okay, so I cut off the corroded bits of aluminum. If you look at the piece of metal from a cross-section standpoint, there's a lot of material that had corroded away. Okay, so there you have it. We did a pretty good job of revitalizing these spars when we first did our major refit in Key West. One thing that I didn't do though was replace the tangs. And so you can see here our lower shroud tang. It's just got a lot of corrosion going on. So there's a chance that these are very old. I have no idea how old, but they could be pretty darn old. I'm just gonna have new ones made. Okay, so I got all of the tangs off of the mast. But I just wanted to sit down real quick and break open my Rigger's Apprentice by Brian Toss to make sure that they're appropriately sized and, and appropriately shaped. I'm so glad that I did this because it turns out that there's actually something that I want to change about every single tang. First of all, here's the main lower tang. If you've got two lower shrouds connecting to a single tang, then this tang should be attached to the mast by a through bolt that is one size bigger than the clevis pins of the lower shrouds themselves. And so that means that the bolt should be 5 8 inch 
this bolt has been half inch. And so that actually means that this needs to be thicker than it is. So this is quarter inch. And if we're gonna use a 5 8 inch bolt, then this should be 5 16 inch thick. Then the third thing on the sides of each hole, that amount of metal is not quite enough. It should be a little bit thicker. And so when I have Kiwi Dave cut these new ones, I'm gonna have the corner of this triangle extend straight up before it goes in. Catching these weak points in our rig actually makes me really happy. For our Pacific Crossing, our rig is gonna be that much stronger. Even if we accomplish nothing else, simply solving and fixing these weak points uh, would be totally worth the effort of bringing those masks down. All right, good morning. So the next step to making our rig bulletproof is to address a couple of problems that we have with our bob stay chain plate. One is that the sealant around the chain plate, I believe is failing because there's a little bit of rust stain coming out uh, down by the water line. The other thing, when I first redid the whole rig a couple years ago, I made this new bob stay and I used the exact same dimensions and pin sizes as the previous bob stay. When I made a new chain plate, I used the same hole size as our previous chain plate. Problem is, is that the hole from the previous chain plate and the pin from the previous bob stay weren't the same size. The pin was a little bit undersized. And that's a big problem because if you have a hole that's larger than a pin, then the pin is going to point load. It's not gonna distribute the load over a large area. And so you could have potential failure. And if that chain plate or the bob stay were to fail, then the rig would probably come down. Now we can't pull the chain plate until we're actually hauled out and in the boat yard because that hole is just way too close to the water line. But we want to do as much of the work as we can now while we're living in the marina and it's nice and comfortable. And so I'm going to prep the chain plate to be pulled today. All right, so I'm heading up forward to the chain locker. So right up here, that is where the Bob State chain plate attaches to the hull. And it is attached to the hull by a fiberglass board. The chain plate is bolted to that fiberglass board and then they glassed over it. Definitely less than ideal, but hey, it, it works. Um, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to uncover the bolts, the heads and the nuts on either side. So my goal is to grind off these bulges and then that way I can get the bolts out of there and then the chain plate will be relatively easy to pull. <laughs> Who's your daddy? Okay, so there you have it. I think that went pretty well. Uh, you can see I was able to expose the nuts over here on this side. I don't want to remove the bolts right now because I just want to keep everything in place for our trip over to the boatyard. Definitely, I would not recommend this setup just because you want to be able to visually see your chain plates and inspect them. Also, we have no idea if this is leaking because it's sealed. And when I cut into this bolt head over here, uh, there was some water trapped inside of there. So it's definitely been leaking and salt water's just been sitting in there against the stainless, which is just terrible. I'm gonna keep it this way for now, particularly now that these are open. At least I can know if it's leaking or not. So there you go. Bob State chain plate is ready to be pulled. <laughs> All right, so I just got the call from Stefan, the woodworker who I hired to build our new mass bases, and he says that they're all finished, so I'm gonna run over to his shop and pick them up. There's a lot of tall ships in the harbor right now. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, 
uh, intersection of Camino Drago. Stefan! Alright, how are you? Good. How are you? Doing good, yeah. Good. So right. you're able to finish up? Yeah, man. It's heavy. Yeah, look at that. Heavy stuff. Yeah, Feel that, it. Feel that, it. that is serious. Feel the thing. <laughs> then you know. Whoa! <laughs> that wood doesn't exist in the States or yeah. in Germany. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no kidding. I mean, that's got to weigh, what, 25? <laughs> 30 pounds maybe? I don't know, but it's heavy, yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah, and what did you call it? Almendro. Almendro. Almond. Yeah, gotcha. But wow. lucky I found a piece like that. Normally they don't get that thick. You know, a board like that, you can't carry it. Yeah. It's like steel. Yeah, it's yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Let me grab Good. your money. Good. Man, this thing is a freaking beast. I'm not worried about our decision to go with wood at all. This is gonna work out great. The, I was really worried about this project and the, the mass cracks were something that concerned me for a year and a half, close to two, and now I feel like I'm finally on the home stretch. So make sure you swing by next Thursday to check out the episode where we actually install this bad boy. All right, we'll catch you guys later. <sighs> All right. Oh. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this week's episode. We wanted to thank some of our brand new deckhand level patrons. So we've got Lucy the Healer and Don and Kim King, Steve Dupree Jr. and Bruce Wilson, Angie Higgins and Wayne Estabrooks, Kirk and Shannon Rexon and Gareth Thomas, Roger Munger and Scuba Josh. We've also got Charles and Valerie Metcalf and Brian Peck, SV Olita and Brian and Crystal, Vince Malizia and Dylan Fried. How you doing? How you doing? And finally, we have Sean D. and David Cherbuck. So guys, thank you so much for your support. It really means the world to us. Uh, without it, we would not be able to put the kind of time and love and effort into these videos that we do. So thank you so much. And other than that, we will catch you guys on Thursday.